Thanks for joining me this evening. Um, this is not going to be a super exciting video for the average viewer, but I had promised uh, one of my uh, subscribers, don't forget to like and subscribe, that I would show them my axe collection. And this is a, well, axe head collection. <laughs> These are pretty much most of the axe heads that I have in my collection that I found over the years. A lot of them in the water, and I don't know why there's so many in the water. It could be a function of maybe logging activities, because of course they used to float logs down rivers and they needed axes for that kind of work. Could be they were cutting ice in the winter for the ice houses and they would drop an axe down through the hole, you know, into the river. I don't really know for sure why there's so many axes in the water, but a lot of these came from the water, including this one. Uh, but anyway, what I'm going to do is just go around the table here. And I'm going to show you some of the different types of axes that I have or axe heads that I have. I don't know a lot about them. Uh, I have some basic information, but there's so many different types and I just don't have enough room up here for learning all about axe heads. Um, but I do have a book I'm going to show you that might help, and there is a lot of information online. So, without further ado, let me go ahead and grab the little camera, and we'll go around and look at some of the individual axe heads. I'll show you some neat features about them. I can show you how to tell if they're hand-forged or if they're, you know, cast in a factory, and uh, a few things like that. So, let's go ahead and do that, and I hope you enjoy the video. Don't forget, like and subscribe, if you like and want to subscribe. All right, let's get to it. Okay, before we get started, I wanted to show you guys this book, Dictionary of American Hand Tools. I am going to put a link to uh, Amazon that actually shows some of these books where you can buy them used. Now, be careful because they run anywhere from $35, which is about what this cost when I bought it new 10 or 12 years ago, to $2,000. <laughs> so, <laughs> just be careful if you do want to buy one of these things. But I wanted to show it to you because not only does it have a lot of these different types of axe heads in it that I have on the table, and of course hatchets too, it's got all kinds of hatchets, but it's loaded with the types of tools that we find when we're metal detecting out in the fields. And I have been able to identify a ton of stuff that I find, just different types of hooks, and of course, you know, just all different kinds of tools. So, anyway, if you want a, this book, I highly recommend it. So, again, I'm going to go ahead and post a link on Amazon to where you can buy these books. But just be careful because they start at 35 and go up to a couple grand, which is ridiculous. But, anyway, let's go ahead and look at some of the axe heads that I have. There's a wide variety here, mostly single-bitted. This is called a single-bit axe. It only has one bit. This is a double well, that's a single, too. I only have a couple double-bitted axes. This is a double-bit axe. It's got bits or blades on each side, cutting cutting or splitting blades on each side. I only have a few of those. That's what I like to use when I do my wood. But uh, mostly single-bitted axes or axe heads. I'm just going to go around the table so you can get a peek at them. If there's anything in particular you want to see on another video, I will gladly um, talk about them some more or answer your questions. Just give me the timestamp when you see the axe that you're interested in. I do want to talk a little bit about uh, these, these style. Generally speaking, the further back the handle is on an axe head, the older it is. Uh, usually they have like a round hole here for the, the most old ones. <laughs> but usually when you see that back further like that, that means it's an older one and they're very unwieldy to use. This is probably my biggest axe that I have. I think this is a uh, finishing axe for like making logs. I don't know what these little squares are right here. They might be some type of maker mark that you can't read anymore. I'm not sure. Found that in the water. You can actually see where the blade was welded on right here. When I say welded, I mean it was done by a blacksmith with a hammer. Uh, so that's pretty cool. This is a hardened steel cutting edge. This is a softer iron. And they would weld these on. And as they wore down, they could take them off and replace them. Show you a few more out here, some different kinds. And I'm going to also show you how you can tell if an axe is hand forged. These are some little hatchets here. I like finding hatchets. Uh, yeah, here's another good example of uh, the weld. This is again, you can see this line right across here. This is where a hardened 
uh, steel tip was welded on by a blacksmith as a cutting edge. This is softer metal right here, softer iron. And if you look where it's flaked off, you can see there's like lines running through it. And that's um, done by the blacksmith. That's how they forge these things with a hammer. They, they straighten out the grains in the iron. And that's, how they, that's what they're doing when they're hitting with a hammer so many times. I'm not a blacksmith, but that's my understanding. Uh, so yeah, that's another area you can see it was welded on. And you can tell this looks really soft. It's much darker than some of the other axe heads. And it just looks softer. That's called uh, graphiting. And that's when the iron actually leaches out into the soil or the water. And it makes it much softer and just kind of turns into graphite. The same thing happens with artillery shells. Humor over here. I love to find the ones that have been used a lot like this. You can see this one was actually broken. It was hammered on a bunch, either splitting wood or doing whatever they were doing with that particular axe. Different styles like this. You can see these little scallops right here. Uh, that's actually in the book. And here. This one, was, look at this one. This one was used a bunch. That's amazing, isn't it? It really beat the heck out of this axe doing whatever they were doing. The same way with that one over here. Let's see if I can grab that. Look at that. That took a lot of force to smash it like that. They probably took the handle out, I would guess, and beat on it with a sledgehammer trying to split uh, wood and whatnot. And because there was no handle in it, again, I'm just guessing, it deformed so much like that. So, uh, But anyway, that's about it for these axe heads. If there's anything you want me to talk about or you have questions about, let me know. These have all been run through electrolysis. Uh, they probably need some more work, at least some of them. I can tell they're, if you look here, at this iron, see how it's rusty looking? That needs to be run through electrolysis again. Um, unfortunately, of course, this one too is actually starting to flake a little bit. Alrighty, that's my axe collection. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so that wraps it up. I hope you liked the little video. I know it wasn't very long, but there's not a lot of stuff I can tell you about these things. I'm going to do some more videos. I'll probably do a gun video coming up, showing you some of the different guns that I've found. Uh, mostly like muskets, musket barrels, and stuff like that. If there's anything else you want to see out of my collection, I'll uh, gladly show it to you. I'll put it on the table, whether it be certain types of belt buckles or cannonballs or whatever. And I would just go from there. So, we'll see you next time. Don't forget, like and subscribe. We'll see you then.